Good morning. This is Luke with a weekly update for Enigma. So we'll start right away. So I hope everyone can see my screen. Please let me know if you can't. Yeah, it looks good, Luke. Okay, perfect. So we'll start with a quick overview of the Enigma trading strategy, talking briefly about the investment philosophy and the trading engines. So Enigma, in essence, is an exercise in trying to manage what we don't know. So we are very focused on risk management and risk control. So all of our trading is basically created around that concept. So as we know, the market is usually efficient, at least most of the time in the long term. But on the shorter term, we find plenty of imperfections. And the objective of Enigma is basically trying to determine certain rules or systematic approaches to exploit, first of all, detect and then exploit these kind of inefficiencies as they can be seen on a regular basis. For that, we trade the S&P 500 futures. You can trade either the E-mini or the micro, and we use different types of algos. In essence, three different algos are used. They are each compatible, they have a different trading style, and we're not using any optimization to come up with trading signals. We look at the market using different time frames, but only the trading in the day session is what we do. So we, although we look at data, which is collected outside the regular trading hours, we only trade or generate trading signals during the day session. And in terms of trading frequency, it's pretty low, so it's very selective. We have like four or five trades per week, sometimes one or two, sometimes as, man, as many as 10. The approach that we use can be summarized quickly because it's really an, S, an, uh, an exercise in trying to find some structural alpha. In other words, on a regular basis, find something that repeats, that is recurring. And we do this by starting with the research, trying to detect the market anomalies and inefficiencies, find some statistics to basically create the evidence that there is something real uh, behind it, then build the algo and then make it scalable, building it, coding it into a strategy. So the three engines are momentum, bias, and hedging. Momentum is like a trend following approach. So it tries to identify bullish or bearish directional price moves and this across various time frames. The bias is mainly a classification algo where we try to find or detect if the market is in an up mode or in a down mode. So the, if there is a certain bias, a certain tilt to the way the market is moving, and then it needs, it requires some additional confirmation before a trading signal can be generated. On the hedging side, the third type of algo, it uh, tries to find extreme price movements, so tail risk events as they are commonly used. And it's then using a reversal approach to compensate basically the trend following or the bias training algos. So they go hand in hand. Each of them as a standalone would be profitable, but with significant drawdowns. While if you combine the three algos, the momentum, the bias and the hedge together, the drawdown can be very well controlled. And that's what we try to achieve. So the trading signals, as I mentioned, will only be issued during the regular trading hours. However, in terms of when they are being issued, they can be either issued the whole trading day, in other words, between 9.30 Eastern and 4 o'clock, or only at the end of the day. So the end of day version is only generating trading signals at the end of the trading day, while the intra version is using every single trading signal that can be issued during the regular trading hours. So we see many more trading signals, of course, there than the one which is only looking at the close. And of course, we can trade either long, short, or in both directions. So risk management, as I mentioned, is really key to the program. Why? For the simple reason that it's the only thing that we can really control. That's the choice of the trader. While return is some, something which is determined by the market, we have no impact on that. The building blocks, of course, consist of trying to build convexity into the strategy, which basically means that you will add on to a winning trade and actually scale out of losing trades. 
and the usual concepts are being used, i.e. position sizing, trade management, and other instruments. Now, if we look at the recent performance, we see that, first of all, the blue line is the Enigma intraday trade alerts since May last year, so about, I should say, 15 months, 15 and a half months nearly. And you see, obviously, that it's very different from the S&P 500. During the same period, S&P went up about 10% since mid-May of last year, while Enigma is up about 20%, slightly over 20%. But what is striking is that the correlation is totally absent. Sometimes they will go hand in hand, like here, for example, but then at other points in time, they do the exact opposite. For example, here you see in September of last year, the market going down, Enigma going up, then the market going up, Enigma going down. So it's really a non-correlated or very lowly correlated approach to trading the S&Ps. If you look at the data, on a monthly basis, we see that these are the monthly results. Sorry, I'll just bring that back. And for the current month, I show the weekly results as well. And we see that we have a bad month in August. So basically drawing down about 5.76% since uh, the previous high equity. So although the market has been pretty volatile and shown some nice trends. Enigma did not really uh, capture most of that movement. So that really is part of the game. So it's not really going hand in hand with the market, as I mentioned. So it's not because the market is going up that Enigma will make money or that Enigma will lose money if the market is going down. It's doing something different. So that means, of course, as well, that if the market is going up, we can actually lose money. And if you look at the number of trades, the trade alert since the third quarter, so since the beginning of July, we've had only like 17, 18 trades, I think. So not that many. And you see them here in terms of the intra evolution. So we were flat at the beginning of, or well, at the end of June. Then we went long one contract, added to one, stayed long for quite a while. So little activity here then went back to flat, back to long, to minus one, to plus two, to minus two. And now we have essentially been long for the last couple of weeks. And if you look at the number of trades, you see them here. So we are flat now since August uh, 21st, as can be shown here actually. So we exited the last trade, which we entered on August 15, we exited on two occasions. So the last one was exited on the 21st of August. And since then, so after Monday of this week, we didn't have any new trades. So if we take a quick look at the end of day version, it's of course much less frequent in terms of trading signals. We only had like 29 trades since we started the service in mid February. So February 15 was the first trade, a short trade. And since then we have captured about 446 points on the S&P. So this one, this last one is just a mark to market. So we haven't exited the trade. We went long on August 15 buying two contracts and we are still long these two contracts. So, but just to take into account the current valuation as if we would have exited on Friday around 44.15, that would have been a losing trade, which would have resulted in a slightly a drop in equity. But so with all the lose, with all the close trades, we're up about 520 points since we started on February 15. So that's pretty good result. And if you look at the dollars gained or lost since then, it would translate to about 20, $2,000 starting with a $20,000 account, so about 11.16, taking into account this mark to market. If you only consider the closed rates, we would be up 13% for the last half year, I should say, which is higher than average because we make something like 12 to 18% with the end of day version normally. The drawdowns are about 8%, so 8.42 has been the highest drawdown that we've seen. 
so far. And that can get higher. It can go as high as 15% historically. But so, so far, since we started mid-February, returns around 11, 12, 13%, I should say, and a drawdown of about eight and a half. So on a curve, you see on the chart, since mid-February, you see the S&P here in brownish color, up about six, 7%, while the program is up about slightly over 10%. And again, you see the absence of correlation, like here the market going up, not tremendously, but the enigma end of day going down. And here it's like the other way around, a very steep increase in performance while the market didn't increase that much. So it can be very different from one trade to the next. So that's mainly what I had for today's weekly update. Let's see if there are any questions that we're posting Do you want to talk chat. about collective? Oh yeah, that's a good idea. So collective basically is a service where we can uh, automate the trading for Enigma. What is going to happen there is in essence that I will have a dedicated account where I trade Enigma and it can be either on the futures implementation, in other words, where I trade the futures market, or I trade it using options. So Enigma can also, of course, be implemented with options as well. And that's what I'm uh, going to provide as well. So if a subscriber says, well, I would like to follow these Enigma trade alerts, but I don't really have the time to implement the trades or do the trades myself. I simply want to uh, basically copy all the trades that I would be doing. In other words, you take a subscription at Collective and you select Enigma trade alerts, for example, futures, Enigma futures, then every single futures trade I would do, which is basically every time that an Enigma trade alert will pop up, I will execute a trade buying an S&P future, could be the mini or the micro. And with your account, it will automatically be copied into your account by Collective2. So for subscribers uh, via Iromir, I would get a very significant discount. So it's basically not going to cost you much more having it done automatically and implemented it automatically. If someone say from Iromi, so to speak, takes a subscription, the normal subscription, of course, to the trade alerts. But so in essence, it boils down to, uh, you can have the trade signals being implemented into your account instantly. And it's like within one second, I'm being told, as soon as I do the trade, Collective will get, will see the trade being executed in my account. It's copied automatically into the subscriber's account as well. The condition is, of course, that it needs to be an account which can be uh, linked to Collective. But I think most of the uh, usual Brokers can be linked to collective, definitely interactive brokers. That's I know for sure, but I imagine that also DOS and other brokers will be uh, collected to collective too. And it's available in Europe and in the US. So I will be providing the signals from Europe, of course, because I'm in Belgium, but subscribers or people who participate via collective too, if they are in Australia, America or Europe, it doesn't really matter. So it can be done from everywhere in the world. It's simply a question of linking your account to Collective and selecting a certain trading, uh, a trade, ma a trade manager as they call it. And so I expect this to be active in the next couple of weeks. I'm going to have some uh, response from Collective and then basically we'll get started with it. So I'll keep you posted, Tom, as soon as I have the, the green light from Collective. Okay, so with Enigma, I think you're flat right now. So I guess this yes, would be a true. good time for somebody to yep. subscribe because there's Absolutely. no catching up or anything. Absolutely, because it's sometimes a little bit tricky. Imagine I'm long three contracts and then I'm exiting. So 
the person who has no position doesn't know exactly what to do. Shall I do something or wait? Is this like a new signal? So now we are now flat. So that's uh, indeed an ideal situation to get started with the program, I think. Plus volatility has been picking up, which is usually a good thing for the system as well. Like one of the better years was uh, 2022, uh, 2020, uh, 2015. So these kind of environments when there is a lot of volatility and volatility spikes, usually it's quite good for, this, for the system as well. Well, a year such like 2017 or 2019 is much more difficult for the program compared to someone who would be simply doing a buy and hold of the S&P. So it would usually be underperforming in an, a low volatility environment when the market is grinding up or making slow, tiny moves, while if the market is really making big changes, making big price movement, then uh, it's usually where Enigma is, uh, is kicking in. Okay. All right, I don't Very see good. any more questions, Luke. Okay, thank you. Well, in that case, we'll, uh, we'll talk again next week uh, with a weekly update scheduled for next Saturday. Perfect. All right, okay. well, thanks very much, and I'll see you next week. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Bye now. Bye. Bye.